In this video, you're going to learn how you can implement reloading like this, where optionally the gun can reload itself after it's run out of bullets or whenever the player presses R. We'll also talk about some different ways that games handle reloading so you can see which one best suits your game. Hey, Chris here from Wom Academy, here to help you. Who? Me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality by helping you implement reloading into your game. There are a couple things that we want to think about whenever we're implementing reloading. One is there's two different ways that usually games manage the reload. One is you basically discard your current clip whenever you're reloading and you get a new one, which is, I guess, the not ammo conserving way. And then there's the one that's a little bit less realistic where if I have 15 ammo in a 30 ammo clip, we just like shove 15 extra bullets into that clip and stick it back in. That way it's a little bit nicer for the player experience in my opinion, because you get more ammo conservation going on. And if you're in between fights, you can reload and not have to worry that, hey, I just wasted 15 bullets. But you can choose which one of these works best in your game. And we'll talk about how you can do either one once we get to that part of the code. The second complexity with doing reloading is the time it takes you to actually reload. Most of the tutorials I see do just a, hey, reload speed, and you're gonna wait X number of seconds, and then we're going to add the ammo back into your clip. And then you have to synchronize your animations to that time or that time to that animation. And it just makes it a little bit more cumbersome to deal with, in my opinion, than what we're going to implement today. So today we're going to implement a new ammo config scriptable object that will handle things like the max ammo you can hold, the clip size, how much ammo you currently have, and how much ammo is in the current clip. We're going to tie that into the gun scriptable object, so we'll subtract ammo as we shoot. Then we'll tie in the animator into the player action. That way whenever we hit reload or whenever we run out of ammo and we do an auto reload, some animation will play. We'll get an animation event callback after the reload animation has completed. We're not going to do any like super fancy animations. I pulled one off Mixamo and we're just gonna use that. There's more that you'd wanna do with your animations than what we're implementing today. And the last thing we'll do is add in the ability to see how much ammo you have, because that's a pretty important piece of information for your player to have. So reloading is a little bit more complicated than it seems like it would be at first glance. Let's hop in and see how we can implement all that. We'll jump right into the new configuration, the ammo config scriptable object, add in the create asset menu attribute, make it extend the scriptable object, and we'll add in all these required fields we needed on the scriptable object. As I was saying earlier, we're gonna make it where we can hold the maximum amount of ammo. That's the max ammo. We'll set it to 120 by default. The clip can only hold so many bullets in each clip, so we'll set that to be 30. And we also need to track the current values of whatever the player currently has that'll be in the current ammo in the current clip ammo. We're gonna make this responsible for actually handling the reload functionality. So we'll define a public void reload. We're gonna find out how much are we gonna reload with int max reload amount equals mathf.min between the clip size and the current ammo. In case we were like running out of ammo, we don't wanna reload the full clip. We'll count up how many bullets are currently available in our current clip with clip size minus current clip ammo. And then we'll calculate how much are we actually gonna reload with int reload amount equals mathf.min max reload amount and the available bullets in current clip. We'll then just add that reload amount to our current clip ammo and subtract that from the current ammo. Now, if you want this to work the not ammo conserving way, you just define the reload amount to be the mathf.min between clip size and current ammo. Then you just set the current clip ammo to be the reload amount and subtract the reload amount from the current ammo. The last thing we'll do here is define a helper function to say, can we reload? Public bool can reload. And we'll just return that the current clip ammo is less than the clip size. We don't want to be able to reload if we're full on ammo. And our current ammo is greater than zero, meaning we actually have ammo to add to our clip. Let's add this to the gun scriptable object next. At the top where we have our other configurations, let's add in that ammo config. And to use this, there's really two things we need to do. First is on tick, which remember is called every update, where we receive from the player input whether they want to shoot or not. We can't just always shoot whenever the player wants to. We need to check the ammo first. So we'll make sure that our current clip ammo is greater than zero, and then we'll actually do the shoot. In the shoot function itself, we need to subtract ammo whenever we are shooting. So in the second if where we're actually doing that shoot, we'll just subtract ammo from the current clip ammo. I'll do that just before we do that raycast to find out what we're gonna hit. And to make things just a little bit easier, I'm also going to define a public bool can reload that just calls the ammo config can reload. Now let's take a look at the player action. This is the thing that's handling all the user input, right? Right now we're just saying, hey, we're going to shoot whenever the left mouse button is pressed. That's basically it. I'll first add a serialized field private bool auto reload. We'll set it to true by default. 
So the first case would be we're out of ammo, we have auto reload turned on and we can reload, then we're gonna actually do the reload. The other case would be the player presses R, we'd like to reload. That ends up being a lot of conditions in this one if, so I'm actually gonna split this out into two functions just to make it a little bit more readable. So the manual reload is going to be keyboard.current.rkey.was released this frame. That's using the new input system keyboard input. If using the old input system, you can just do input.get key up key code R. So if they press R and we can reload, then this one will return true. And we'll just do back an update if should manual reload or should auto reload. Cool. But how do we actually do the reloading? That's a little bit tricky. You might think, well, we'll just do reload. But remember that reload happens in a single frame. You probably want to play some animation and you want there to be some kind of reload time. Now, most tutorials I saw on this have like some kind of reload speed defined and then they'll start a coroutine, wait for that reload speed and then do the reload, playing some animation in there. But then you need to know the exact length of your reload animation and maybe your different guns have different reload times. So then that should go onto the, maybe the gun scriptable object or the ammo config, something like that. I don't like that because then if you change your animation or you need to play faster, you have to update both the scriptable object and the animator. So instead, what we're going to do is do this with an animation event. So we're going to play an animation that's going to do whatever it's going to do. We can control the speed of the animation strictly with the animator. And whenever it's completed, then we're going to get an event from the animation system that will say, hey, this animation has completed. And only then will we actually do the reload. So to do that, we're going to add a reference to an animator. And because I'm using inverse kinematics to kind of position the hands, we're also going to need a reference to the inverse kinematics. Otherwise, this looks really silly. We're going to set the animator. I'm doing it with a trigger reload. So that's just going to fire off. Hey, you need to do the reload animation. Then I'm going to do some stuff with inverse kinematics to make it less strong. I know I haven't gone into the inverse kinematics yet. We'll get there probably in the series later. It's not super important for what we're talking about today. So after we fire off this, remember, we're going to get an animation event. We're going to make that animation event be called end reload. So we'll define on the player action private void end reload. It's also important to note that the player action has to be on the same object as the animator that's raising this event. So our player action is on the player animator, so it's safer to catch that end reload event. We'll call the gun selector active gun dot end reload, which we're going to define in a second and set the inverse kinematics back to do whatever they were doing before. To prevent duplicate animations from happening here, because we have on update, we're checking to auto reload. What we're going to do is we'll add an is reloading bool. We'll set it to be true as soon as we set that trigger and whenever we determine we do want to reload and on the end reload at the very end we'll set is reloading to be false. We'll also update the should manual reload and should auto reload to say that we should not be reloading. So let's go back to the gun scriptable object. We'll just define that public void end reload to be ammo config dot reload. Similarly to what we did with can reload, we're just making it so we can access it from the gun scriptable object instead of making us go all the way deep in. I think that sets up our system. So let's hop back to the editor. We'll select our player where we have the player action and we'll hook up the animator and the inverse kinematics there. We'll also create those ammo configs. The defaults I put are actually what I want for the M4, so we'll leave that one alone. On the Glock, maybe we will lower the max ammo and clip size to 120. I think that's pretty normal. And then don't forget to hook them up to the base gun scriptable object. Now we need to set the animator for this player to be able to actually do that reload animation, right? I got this animation from Mixamo. We're gonna change the animation type to humanoid. You can see it looks like this. It looks like it's reloading. So we're going to take that and use it on our model. But first, the animation is always called mixamo.com. So we're going to change that to be reloading. I'm also going to shorten it because it looks like we're kind of done here at frame 90. Just in case there's any root motion, I'm going to take off all this root motion stuff, so bake into pose. And finally, at the very end, you can use the arrow keys here to make sure you're at the very, very end. I'm gonna create a new event under the events. Click this little plus button. And remember, we called it end reload. Don't forget to apply that. 
Then in our animator, we can add a new layer, drag in this animator. I'm also going to create an empty state and set that as the default, so it won't do anything by default. Then we're going to take from the any state, transition to reloading, and have reloading transition out to the exit state. On this layer configuration, we're going to set the weight to be 1. We'll keep override for now. And this is really just to make this working. You'll want to spend a lot more time, get a lot better animations, maybe do procedural animations to make your reload look really good. This is really just to show you how we can hook up the animation event so we get that callback and we can move on. We need a parameter, a trigger called reload. We'll transition from the any state to the reloading state when reload is set. Then reloading will transition to exit when it has exit time. We're going to want to make sure there's no blending because we put this at the very last frame. If you've blended off that animation, it won't call your animation event. One last thing, when we're transitioning from any state to our reloading state, we want to turn off can transition to self, so that way we don't trigger coming to reload while we're already in the middle of the reload animation. So with this, I think we'll be okay. Let's click play and see how it works. Cool. I can shoot. When I run out of ammo, I do that auto reload, and then I reset. That's perfect. Last thing that you'll probably want to do with this is display to yourself the ammo that you have. It's very inconvenient to have no idea how much ammo you have. Since we already have a canvas, all I'm going to do is use that same canvas to show the ammo. So I've just made an image. Very commonly in games, we'll have that ammo text position at the bottom left. So I'm just going to position this image at the bottom left, set it to have a semi-transparent background, and then put a text as a child of that image, showing some placeholder text of how much ammo we might have. We'll attach an ammo displayer script to this text, and then let's use that ammo displayer. We'll disallow multiple components and require a type of text mesh pro UGUI. We'll add a reference to the gun selector with a serialized field private player gun selector gun selector and the private text mesh pro UGUI called ammo text. On awake, we'll get that reference to the ammo text. And on update, we'll just set the ammo text to be the gun selector active gun ammo config to the current clip ammo, and then a slash, and then the gun selector active gun ammo config dot current ammo. Back in the Unity editor, we'll drag the player gun selector to that gun selector on the ammo displayer. If we click play one last time, we see the 30 of 120. As we start shooting, we see I have one of 120 bullets. If I press R to reload, we'll see that I lost 29 ammo for my total ammo, and I have 30 in my current clip. As I run out, I reload, and it updates again. And right now, from December 12th to December 19th, TriPolygon has all of their assets 50% off, and you get a free gift with the code MOONGLOW. And here, for our final case, we see 13 ammo remaining in my current clip, 2 total ammo left. I should end up with 15 ammo and 0 on the right. Perfect. So one thing to keep an eye on whenever you're doing this is remember that in the editor, the script of objects will persist data across runs, and in the build, they will not. So our ammo every time we launch is going to retain wherever we were the last time. You can handle that the same way that we did on the gun scriptable object with the times and just reset it to have the max ammo if that's what you're looking for your game to have. Each game is going to handle how you get ammo differently. For example, some games you might only get one clip whenever you pick up the gun and you might have to scrounge around to find more ammo. So think about how you want your game ammo to work. And remember, it's not persisted on the devices. It's only in the editor because we have the editor context. There's some weirdness that goes on with scriptable objects. So reloading's not as easy as it seems like it should be. It seems like a really simple concept, but there's a little bit more intricacy that goes into how do you manage that. As always, the full project's on GitHub. This is part four of the gun series. So remember, there's going to be more coming on. We're not done yet. There's a lot more to cover for guns. Make sure you've liked and subscribed to stay up to date whenever the new videos come out. And if you want to support this channel, reach as many people as possible to help everyone make their game dev dreams become a reality you can go to patreon.com slash llama academy get your name up here on the screen get a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier for those voice shout outs there's gerald anderson autumn k matt parkin ivan and rulin and at the phenomenal tier there's andrew bowen and andrew albright
Thank you all for your support. I'm so grateful.